Yo, what's up? How's it going? XFL week one is in the books. I'm gonna sit here and tell you about what I think about it. Here we go! Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Appreciate you clicking on the video. Uh, XFL just had its first week of week, weekend, whatever, of football. Absolutely love you uh, for clicking on the video. Uh, if you would, hit the subscribe button for me. Get a little more razzle-dazzle with your uh, morning cereal or whatever it is that you're doing right now. But anyway, XFL, new football league. The experiment has been done multiple times before. This one seems to have a lot of money backing it, so therefore we have a little bit of an interesting go. There are many topics that I want to discuss. It's a totally different experience. Genuinely a, a really, really good uh, breath of fresh air for the football sport. So I'm going to get into it. There's not really a list. I'm just going to start thinking about things and get, get in front of your face with them. Uh, number one, starting off the game with kickoffs. Kickoffs have been changed where uh, opponents are starting five, parts, five yards apart. Uh, and then the kick from the 30-yard uh, the line that goes across midfield into the opposing uh, players area. They have to uh, field the ball. When they field, the, well, they don't have to field the ball, but anyway, when they field the ball, that's when the players on, that are five yards apart can actually come together. Uh, I would like to see a little bit of difference. I'm not sure if you have to stay on the five yard line apart from each other. I'm sure the kicking team probably does, but I think it will be interesting to see if there's anything that gets altered or changed. Um, with trying to maybe uh, have defenders uh, uh, as far as staggered instead of everybody being on the five yard line, uh, I think that would make I think that would make game plans a little bit different on the kickoffs. That's very interesting to me. Uh, I enjoy the if you, if you don't kick it past the twenty yard line, then the ball just gets placed on the forty five, kind of like a penalty of kicking it out of bounds, uh, and then touchbacks go all the way to the 30 or the 35. I can't remember exactly which one it is. But those innovations, I think, take out a lot of the danger that comes with a kickoff. Uh, having guys have a running start, which has rightfully been changed to having them start just one yard away. I just remember when I played football, having people come full speed at you while you're either trying to block or uh, run. Those collisions can be very harmful and very dangerous. So it's very, very cool to see an innovation practice being had. And uh, we'll see where that actually goes. Um, next thing on my mind is the 25 second play clock. Uh, 25 second play clock is super, super quick. Actually seeing it played out this weekend was, was very interesting. The good flip side is that everybody on the offense, well, not necessarily everybody, I've, I've, I've heard different things, but the offensive players can all hear the play that's being called immediately from the sideline. This is really good as far as not having to have the huddle. Um, I was I was dictating what was happening with, with huddle. So if you, if you take the 40-second NFL play clock and move it straight down to 25, having to get the play in or having everybody to get to huddle, then get the play in, have the play relayed to all the players, breaking of the huddle, lining up, reading the defense, there's not going to be enough time with 25 seconds. So let's just say you had a 30-yard play downfield. That 30-yard play has everybody running back up to get into the huddle. That usually takes between 5 and 7 seconds. Let's go on the conservative or the, the liberal side of it and just take 5 seconds. You're going to go really fast. You're going to do 5 seconds to get into the huddle. So once you get to the huddle, the play comes in. You relay the play and you break the huddle. That probably takes roughly about 7 seconds to hear the play, reiterate the play, have everybody know what's going on ready break. Um, that, that seven second mark is now put you at 12 seconds. You have 13 seconds to put protection, figure out what type of coverage or read the defense. And then if you want to audible, not going to happen. So luckily they allowed for every player on the offense to have a mic or a, a headset inside of their helmet so that they can hear all the players. So you see a lot of players put their hands over their ear holes so that they can hear whatever play is coming in. It's it's very smart that if you are bringing it down. So I had my stipulation saying like, ooh, 25 seems a little fast because it doesn't seem like you're going to be able to do much. There's going to be a lot of issues with actually making good drives out of it. Uh, but with the headsets coming in, it makes it more reasonable uh, as far as to expect a 25-second play clock. I was thinking more of a 30 or 35, but I think it actually does pretty good. Uh, I still might make it 30 just to, to slow the pace a little bit. Uh, I had been I have been told about the prop up of uh, with 25 means more plays, more plays means more injuries or more chances to get hurt. 
you know, injuries, I feel, happen a lot more with how people play the game than necessarily the game itself in general. Um, using your body as a total weapon is very taxing, so I can see where those problems can occur. But I don't think that just, I mean, obviously, if you have more chances to get hurt, then there probably has, you know, there's a higher probability of you getting hurt. Uh, I don't think that that's necessarily on the, like, you couldn't say that, you know, hey, if we had a 60 game, 60 second play clock, that our injuries would go down. I don't think it would work that way. Moving on, moving on from all of that. Next part, I didn't get to see any double passes. I did only watch one game just due to the fact that I've been trying to stream. The one game that I did see, I didn't get to see any double passes. Uh, I watched, I watched fully the, well, for the most part, I watched fully the Renegades versus, uh, oh gosh, the uh, Battle Hawks, St. Louis. I was like, it's Dallas and St. Louis, but I already stead Renegade, so I don't know how to do it. Anyway, moving forward. <laughs> I didn't see any double passes. You're able to do two forward passes within the game. It's it's interesting to me that that wasn't implemented more. I've seen that the strategy on how the game is played with both the fast moving and how the clock works in XFL is not utilized very well right now. Uh, the strategy will grow as people are understanding of how the game is actually played. Uh, for the most part, like I said, 95% of it, you're pretty much the same, but there are a few tweaks that I see that people aren't utilizing. Inside of two minutes, you got a uh, clock stoppage on every single play. If it's inbounds, they run five seconds off the play clock, then the clock restarts. I think that's very interesting. It makes it makes two minutes last even longer than it, than it does uh, in the NFL, but at the same time, those two-minute drills are... Are, are still very fast and it gives it gives the players even uh, more of a chance so when you when you're lining up in the NFL and the two minutes is going off yeah you hustle 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 but that two minutes just gets eaten alive when you have a large play on the two minutes in XFL that clock stops and people have time to run to the line before the clock starts so it, la it makes for the two minutes to last longer which is probably the more exciting part of the game because Everything is is so high strung. We're one score away. We need to have this happen. So where uh, XFL has decided that we're going to expand that, and I think that's that's very good. Uh, I, I enjoyed that because it was even though it was longer, it seemed like nothing was out of grasp. So uh, in the NFL, you have to throw a forty yard bomb on your first play if you want to even have a chance of scoring. Uh, if you're inside of a minute, whereas on this one, you could have multiple chances within that minute just due to the fact that the the, the time would stop all the time. If you do get out of bounds on the inside the two minutes, the clock stops until the ball is snapped. Moving on from that, uh, the extra point try, extra point. Part scores are going to be very interesting. So basically in the NFL, when you score a touchdown, the extra point is always a field goal or a two point conversion from the two yard line. Uh, the XFL has changed it to where there is no field goal, but you can do a one point conversion from the two yard line, a two point conversion from the five yard line or a 10 point conversion, 10 point, a three point conversion from the 10 yard line. I think it's very interesting how the store, how the, how the game gets played. So you have a max of nine points on the end of a drive. Uh, and that can swing games very, very highly. Um, I think, from my personal experience, I think going for two would probably be the most beneficial on all time. If you had a scheme that worked really well from the 10-yard line uh, and you could almost guarantee a three-point, there, there would be very interest. I would just love to see a strategy that pulls out a 10-yard three-point conversion every single time. Uh, if, if that was capable of being done, 10 yards is a little bit far, but it does give a lot more room, uh, inside of the area to be able to pass the ball more. So, uh, windows would be a lot more open than, than if you did it on the five. So, uh, there, I, I'm just excited. I'm excited to see it. I'm excited to see the changes. Um, moving on to a little bit of logistics, uh, open mics are everywhere. They, you hear the players, you hear the people in the booth, you hear people doing play reviews from the refereeing crew. Um, you, I mean, everything is, it, it, it was so cool. It was so interesting to see. Now the game that I saw Pat, uh, McAfee, I think I said his name, right? Pat McAfee, um, was on the, on the sidelines with a mic and he's just walking up to players, random players. We're talking free safety who just made a pick. We're saying running back who just ran the ball. A wide receiver who just threw you know, the pass down the field and missed it. Like, he's interviewing people randomly while they're running around the field. 
Also, cameras. They, they have The camera guys are allowed to go anywhere on the field. They just run up on the field and start shoving a camera up in your face. And it's just, I just, it's a, it's a total, total different thing. But it also seems like it's very just showy. Um, and there's not, uh, there's less, uh, less uh, uh, rigid, rigidity, rigidity, blah, 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 blah. It just seems like there's less formality on what the game is and what's allowed on the game. So usually what happens is the field is clear for the referee and the referee determines whether or not uh, somebody should or should not enter the field. So there's kind of a respect for the game. XFL, it is a show. You've got uh, cameramen on the field, like behind the refs and everything to uh, get close-ups on different players. Um, it, I, maybe it was just the game that I watched. I don't know, but it's, uh, it, it is a, it is a media event. It is something that is there for people to enjoy. And they know that, um, they have, <laughs> they have all the little things too. They have apps for, uh, for information. They have an XFL shop. They have all sorts of different things. And it's, it's amazing to me to see this thing go from basically nothing into boom, something very, very large. So my thought, my thoughts and takes. It's a breath of fresh air for the sport. I think the XFL did a brilliant job marketing, both marketing their game and getting people hyped for it, and then also presenting it right after football. So instead of waiting a month or so after football to say, hey, guys, we're here, and people are already into you know, watching basketball, watching uh, the hockey, or moving on to baseball, or any of that, before any of that could take place, they said, guess what? Every weekend for the last five months, you've been watching football. Hey, 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 here we are. We're going to continue that while you still have it. And we're going to show you what we have to present. So brilliant, absolutely brilliant marketing technique to to show all the games on different networks, give people where they want to watch, more opportunity to wear where they want to watch. And then at the same time, you also have um, the, the routine of the people who have been doing it for five months already, be able to do it for another two more or three more, however many it is. Um, I, I, it's, it's, it's brilliant. It's absolutely smart. Um, so I think it's great. I think that if you, you want to hit a team, hit a team and become a, a fan of them, it's fun to watch. Uh, I mean, it's football, so I enjoy it. I'm a football freak. So there's that. I think I'm excited for it. I'm excited for it. I'm excited to see where it goes. Uh, some of the innovations I would love to see in the NFL, um, just to make it to where it's uh, it's a little safer for the players, and then you get a little more behind the scene type stuff. That's very uh, very eye opening. You get to see more of the the interactions. But I can also understand where you don't want to have you're calling a play, and then oh, let's show you the play. It's like okay, each team can scout every other team. So. Anyway, long story short, I'm excited for it. I think it's brilliant. I think it's good. Um, and it's good to see a lot of these kids who are trying really hard due to the fact that they're trying to make themselves look good in order to get NFL status, um, so on and so forth. So I don't care if it becomes its own standalone and it, can, it rivals the NFL or if it becomes feeder league for the NFL to have people have more opportunity. Um, I just think that the that it is something that is going to be welcomed, welcomed within the sporting world. Um, and as long as it doesn't interfere with the NFL, I think people are more than happy to watch and keep continue to watch competitive uh, football. So with all that, I have been Football Freak 215. If you'd hit the subscribe button, tell me what you think down below. That'd be absolutely appreciated. You guys are beautiful. If you made it this part of the video, have a wonderful day. All those other people who stopped who aren't watching don't know that I think that they are terrible people and I hate... No, I'm just kidding. I absolutely love them. I love everybody who takes the time out of their day to watch some of my content. This has gone on for a hell of a long time. Thank you. Appreciate it. Have yourself a beautiful day. A beautiful Christmas is what was going to come out of my mouth. I don't know why. But yeah, have a beautiful Christmas too in nine months, 10 months, 11 months, whatever it is. I'm out. See you later. Bye-bye.